Welcome, lovely viewers, to another exciting video. Welcome aboard, as we set sail on a journey through William S. Skilstead. William Stephen Skilstead born March 2, 1934, in Omak, Washington is an American prelate of the Roman Catholic Church. He served as Bishop of the Diocese of Spokane in Washington State from 1990 to 2010. He previously served as the Bishop of the Diocese of Yakima in Washington State from 1977 to 1990. Skilstead is a former President of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops USCCB. He was appointed as Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Baker in Oregon in 2011, serving there until 2012. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding early life and gain a fresh perspective. The oldest of six children, William Skilstead was born in Omak, Washington on March 2, 1934, delivered on a table in the garage. A Norwegian immigrant, his father Stephen Skilstead was an apple farmer. Stephen Skilstead was a Lutheran, but his wife Reynolds Elizabeth Dunzel Skilstead was a Catholic from Minnesota. At age 14, having decided to enter the Catholic priesthood, William Skilstead left home to attend the Pontifical College Josephinum in Worthington, Ohio. Get ready for a captivating exploration as we unravel the layers of priesthood and their profound significance. On May 21, 1960, Skilstead was ordained a priest of the Diocese of Spokane. That same year, Skilstead attended Washington State University and served as an assistant pastor at a parish in Pullman, Washington. In 1960, Skilstead began teaching at Montclair, a minor seminary in Colbert, Washington, evaluating student fitness for the priesthood. He entered Gonzaga University in 1961, graduating in 1964. In 1968, Skilstead was appointed rector at the Motta Clary. That same year, he became the pastor of Street Joseph Parish in Colbert. He also sat on a personnel board that counseled the bishop on problem priests. Skilstead continued serving at Motta Clary and Street Joseph until 1974. In 1974, Skilstead became pastor at Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish in Spokane, Washington. In 1976, he left the parish to become Chancellor of the Diocese. In this segment, we'll be unraveling the complexities of Bishop of Yekima and exploring its multifaceted nature. On February 22, 1977, Pope Paul VI appointed Skilstead as Bishop of the Diocese of Yekima. He was consecrated on May 12, 1977, by Archbishop Raymond Hunterson at Holy Family Cathedral in Yekima. Washington. Let's transition to Bishop of Spokane and uncover its significance. On April 17, 1990, Pope John Paul I, I appointed Skilstead as the fifth Bishop of the Diocese of Spokane. His insulation was on April 27, 1990. After having served as the Vice President of the USCCB since 2001, Skilstead was elected to a three-year term as USCCB President on November 15, 2004. In December 2004, the Diocese of Spokane declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy to manage the claims of people credibly abused by its priests. As part of its bankruptcy agreement, the diocese agreed to pay at least $48 million to the victims as compensation. The money for the settlement was to come from insurance companies, the sale of church property, contributions from Catholic groups and from the diocese parishes. On April 12, 2007, four prominent donors to the Diocese of Spokane wrote private letters to Skilstead asking him to resign, terming the sexual abuse settlement he approved as a complete disaster. Skilstead expressed disappointment that the Spokesman Review had published the contents of private letters. Now, we shift our focus to retirement, a topic that deserves our attention. On June 30, 2010, Pope Benedict XVI accepted Skilstad's letter of resignation as Bishop of the Diocese of Spokane. In 2016, Catholic Charities United States of America named Skilstad as one of its two Volunteers of the Year. They cited his counseling and spiritual guidance to clients at the House of Charity in Spokane. 
Skilstead also worked to connect Catholic charities of Spokane clients needing assistance. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at a Donnell case. Court records in 2005 showed that Skilstead during the years, when was still a priest, consistently delayed acting response to sexual abuse accusations against Patrick O'Donnell. O'Donnell was a diocese priest with a history of inappropriate behaviour with teenage boys. The diocese personal board removed O'Donnell from his current parish due to complaints from the pastor. The board then reassigned O'Donnell to the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish in Spokane, where Skilstead was the pastor. After O'Donnell started working at Assumption, Rita Flynn, a parishioner, started hearing stories from her son about O'Donnell behaving inappropriately with boys. She complained about O'Donnell twice to Skilstead, who did nothing. Finally, Flynn's husband told Skilstead he would expose O'Donnell's behaviour to the entire parish if the diocese did not remove him. At that point, the diocese sent O'Donnell to Seattle for treatment. He later admitted to abusing 11 boys at the parish. When asked about O'Donnell in 2005 in a legal deposition, Skilstead said he could not remember meeting with the Flynns or their accusations against O'Donnell. Now, we shift our focus to abuse accusation, a topic that deserves our attention. On March 8, 2006, a woman accused Skilstead of having sexually abused her as a minor from December 1961 to December 1963 at both Street Joseph and Gondigui University. The accusation was made as part of the Diocese of Spokane Bankruptcy Agreement. He completely denied their accusations. On June 12, Skilstad's lawyer said that an investigation he conducted had found no evidence to back the accuser's claim. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding Amnesty International abortion policy change and gain a fresh perspective. In 2007, while Skilstad was USCCB president, Amnesty International AI was consider abandoning its neutral stance on abortion rights in favor of a new policy considering abortion as an international human right under certain circumstances. The USCCB made several appeals to AI to remain neutral on abortion. In April 2007, the AI international leadership adopted the new abortion policy. On July 2, 2007, the USCCB renewed its earlier appeals to AI. In a statement signed by Skilstead, the USCCB said that AI trivializes the harm done by abortion. AI's new policy appears to apply to every stage of pregnancy and has already led AI USA to oppose laws against the killing of partially delivered children. Similarly, the policy of advancing access to abortion to preserve women's health, a word left undefined by AI, has not confined the practice to narrow circumstances, but in American law has led to abortion on demand. In August 2007, the AI International Council affirmed the new abortion policy. In an August 23 statement, Skilstead called the new AI position divisive and an affront to people in many nations, cultures and religions who share a consistent commitment to all human rights. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze Bloody Mary controversy from different angles and evaluate its significance. In 2006, Skilstead condemned the Bloody Mary episode of the TV series South Park. In a letter to Vicom's president and CEO, Tom Fresson, Skilstead said that the Comedy Central channel, owned by Vilcomobs, had shown extreme insensitivity in airing the episode, which featured a derisive statue of the Virgin Mary. When South Park was rerun later in the United States, the Bloody Mary episode was not aired. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding Episcopal succession and gain a fresh perspective. Kakuri American people of Norwegian descent Kakuri births Kakuri Pontifical College Josephinum R. My Kakuri Washington State University R. My Kakuri Ironman Catholic Bishops of Spokane Kakuri Ironman Catholic Bishops of Yekima Kakuri F. Century Roman Catholic Bishops in the United States Kakuri F. Century Roman Catholic Bishops in the United States Kakuri Living People Kakuri Popal from Omak, Washington Kakuri Presidents of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops
I'm here to provide you with the best information, so let me know what else you'd like to learn about.